Okay. Yes, I am here. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you very well and I think um, it's great that we have you here and we can start this presentation in a bit. People mean well type in where they're coming from. Um, so thank you so much. I'm going to unmute my, to mute myself and put my camera off so I can give all the spotlight on to you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Claudia. Thank you for hosting uh, a course today is calling this wonderful Saturday afternoon. My name is Bill Rao, founder and CEO of Swiss Gold Global and, and based here in beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. It's been a beautiful sunny day here. In fact, earlier on today I had the pleasure of swimming in the Rhine River, which really starts here in, uh, in Switzerland, or starts on the, on the border of Austria, Switzerland, Liechtenstein and Germany, actually. So, so it's, a, it's a beautiful time here. So, Thank you for everyone joining us from different parts of the world uh, on this Saturday. So let's get started on this. Uh, own your life uh, is, this, is the whole subject of Swiss Gold Global. And uh, our three pillars of wealth are really real knowledge, real income, and real wealth, gold and silver. And we'll be addressing each one of these pillars as we move through this particular presentation. So again, thank you for everyone who's joining us from different parts of the world. We make our choices, then our choices actually make us. There's no mistake, there's no chance where you are in your life right now. It's all because based on our knowledge, our decisions. But that's all okay. The whole idea of increasing our, our knowledge, renewing our mind in one sense, is that we can, we can make different decisions and, and redirect where we actually want to go in life. And give me a bit of history about myself. You know, uh, as I said, I'm based here in Switzerland. I'm, I'm not Swiss. I'm actually Australian. Been living in Zurich for two years. Prior to that, lived in Frankfurt, Germany, for ten years. But I was born in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, one of eight children, and my parents in the 1966, I think it was, moved to a dairy farm. Good place to to raise a large family. But I was brought up with real solid fundamentals and and uh, and values, as I like, as I'm sure many of you were in many parts of the world. And that is, you know integrity, respect, honest days work for honest days pay in one respect. But something happened in my life in the late 1970s when my father suddenly passed away, leaving my mother a course of uh, you know, some young ones at home and also an intellectually handicapped uh, older brother. So it got me thinking, when I think about my father, all I think about is really work. We had a fantastic life. We had everything that we actually needed. Simple life, but we had everything. Roof over the head, five boys in the one room, plenty of food, as you'd expect from a dairy farm uh, in Australia. But it got me thinking, what is the purpose of life? Why are we here? Are we here just to be enslaved to a system? No, I don't believe so. I believe that we, we should really be able to have be able to provide service, render service to our fellow beings, of course. But to experience life, to give a life, that you can only give if you have something in one respect. And um, I realized that if I continued doing what I was going to do with my profession, I wasn't really going to live the life that I truly wanted. So in 1986, after quite a journey, I bought my first business. It was a small hotel business in the country, just out of Melbourne. Then over the next following 20 years, I, I purchased three other hotels and did very well out of that. But in the early 1990s, a businessman approached me in one of my hotels in Melbourne and said, Bill, I like the way that you do business. Would you be open to look at another business opportunity? And I said, absolutely. At this time in, in, in Australia, it was a recession. Interest rates were 21.5%. I was doing 90 hours a week. I would say I own the business, and that would be a bit of a lie. I think the business actually owned me. I was burdened with debt. So I was open for different things. Now, in the end, the hotel turned out to be very successful. I bought the freehold and went on to buy two other hotels. But I realized I needed to diversify my income possibly. Things were right on the razor's edge back then. And I was introduced to the works and material of Don Failer. Many of you may be familiar with Don and Nancy Failer. The very the name is synonymous in the home-based business. But he had a 45-second presentation which he read out to me, and it really resonated with me. And I want to actually just want you to think about this as we move through today's presentation. It goes like this. When you subtract out the sleeping time, the commuting time, the working time, and time for things you have to do each and every day of your life, almost all people don't have more than one or two hours each day to do what they like to do, and then would they have the money to do it? Now, when I heard that, it resonated with me. Here I was in my own particular business. The business actually owned me. 
I didn't have the financial freedom then. I certainly didn't have the time freedom. And there's no question about it. One thing I've learned over decades of being in business now, because I've been a, a self-employed entrepreneur since 1986, and that is your time and your freedom, are really, and your health, of course, are really the critical assets that you really want to have in life. So I started doing numbers, started learning about this, and I continued what I was doing on the pay rate that I was going to get, doing what most people do, working 40 to 50 hours a week for 40 years, to only retire on 60% of their income, would that give me the life that I actually wanted? And just doing the numbers mathematically, and mathematics do not doesn't tell lies, it's very, very clear. And I think I did the numbers that might have been 10 Australian dollars an hour back then, which was a lot of money uh, back in the, in the 1980s. So 50 hours a week, 40 to 50 hours a week over 40 years of your life, you're, going to, you're actually going to trade at approximately 100,000 hours of your life. You're trading it for a currency. And the challenge of the thing is, if it's $10 an hour, over 40 years, your gross income is going to be $1 million, or 1 million euros, or 1 million yen, or Swiss franc, whatever it might be. Now, of course, you could do your own particular base rate, whatever that might be. But it gives you a bit of a gross idea what you can expect from your gross income from a single source, primary source of income. And of course, the tax man hasn't been paid. He's going to take a minimum of probably 30% upwards to 50%. Then, of course, the necessities of life, roof over the head, food and shelter and things like that. So I came to realize that doing going down this particular path by itself would not be en enough to have another source of income coming in. It's just smart sense. It's wealth sense in one respect. So that's really started when I really started to get involved into the home-based business situation. Now, let's just look at where we are in the world right now. And, excuse me, my shirt just popped open. It's Saturday afternoon, so I'm dressed pretty casual here. Um, it's Saturday afternoon here, so I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me there? I just had some, just wave your hands if you can hear me, please. I just got a message that my audio may have dropped out. Yes, okay, thank you so much. Let's just look at the pitch where we are in the world right now. And there's no question about it. We're going to speak a lot about the United States because it is the world's largest economy. It's also the host of the reserve currency of the world, the US dollar, which you know, really accounts for about 80% of the world transactions. You know, we have about 60 million people on food stamps, federal debt, $19 trillion, student loans increasing all the time, uh, money printing, quantitative easing in one, one respect, or as uh, the former... Fed Reserve Chairman called the helicopter money uh, on the increase, healthcare costs. But this is just not about the US, this is really a global phenomena. I believe people are struggling today. You know, median family income, flat, no wage increases for a very, very long time. Just think about the last time that you actually received a wage increase relative to maybe the purchasing power of your currency. I think things in today's world are certainly out of balance and we need to think about other streams of income. You can see from this particular chart here that one flat line, that's really, that's really the uh, typical worker's pay. There's been no increases whatsoever. In fact, buying power of, of the typical worker's pay has been on the decrease in one respect. I just came back incidentally from New York, actually Kingston, upstate New York, where Gerald Salinta from the Trends Research Institute He's been a trends researcher for 30, 35 years. Um, there's no question about it. We are in the right sector. And he spoke about this. He spoke about the direction of, of employment, uh, contracting, actually. Robotic, robot, robots taking over a lot of our jobs. In fact, a white paper he spoke about, which uh, accounted for 700 job types or job descriptions, nearly half of those are going to disappear in the next five to 10 years because of robots. $4 an hour, no sick days. No, uh, no unions to deal with, uh, all these types of things. No politics in one respect. So we're living in a changing world. And we see the things between the separation between, I believe, the 1% and the middle class. Middle class is really shrinking uh, in today's world. And you can see here, you know, the big difference. Uh, you know, 62 of the, of the world's wealthiest people, their wealth is equal to that of half of the world's population what, three and a half billion people. Now again, I always say, I'm not critical to those 62 people. I'm sure they've done some amazing things which, which has helped humanity. But the point is, from 2008, the banking crisis here, you can see, 
housing crisis, that's where, that's where we see a contraction, where a transfer of wealth away from the people, and we see increase increase in the wealth of the one percent. And regardless of where you are in your life right now, I'm sure you have goals, you have you have dreams. It could be buying your first car, it could be going on your first holiday, international holiday, for example. It could be just paying off those bills that that are on our mind constantly. Whatever it might be, I'm sure you have a dream or a goal that you want to achieve. My question to you is, what is your vehicle? What is your financial vehicle that's going to help you achieve those particular goals and dreams? How does that financial vehicle uh, work for you, perform for you in the last year, three years, five years, ten years? Where do you think it's going to perform in the coming year? three years, five years, ten years, or through to retirement, will you actually be able to achieve or arrive at your destination? And how many years do you think, based on your current financial vehicle, you'll need to get there? Unfortunately, for most people, 95% of people who have just a single source income, they never achieve really the true goals and live the life that they want. This is why Don Fowler really wrote the book, Own Your Life, a 45 second presentation that will change your life. But we'll come back to Don a bit later on. It's quite bizarre, we're living in a time where there's been more wealth, uh, you know, the greatest wealth in history, but at the same time we're living in the most burdened uh, time in history in debt, unprecedented levels of debt, in fact over $200 trillion globally in debt. In fact the US last year spent over $1.2 billion every day just to service that debt that's with zero interest rate policy. Imagine if the interest rates went up, that means of course that would go from 1.2 trillion and would escalate uh, in one respect. So this is, the, this is really the conundrum that we're actually in when it comes to global economics at the moment. In one sense, the sense should be to raise interest rates a bit, but on the other side, they do it. They have to have uh, more debt, to, more money to, to service the debt, which means they're going to have to print more money. Print more money, we lose purchasing power of our currencies. This is the big problem that we face in today's world. Also, we're an aging population. I'm a baby boomer. Baby boomers were born after, let's say, the Second World War, up until about 1961, I think it was. It represents about a third of the world's workforce, a very powerful, strong uh, working committee to set many trends, actually. Well, so we have an aging population, and we're expected to live longer. You know, once upon a time, if you live to 65, you're probably doing very well. Well, today we're living to 85 and longer. In fact, my mother, she's 89. My father passed away in his early 50s, back in the 70s. So, you know, we don't know, none of us know how much sand we have left in the hourglass in one respect. So we have to live life. And to live the life that we really want to live today, we need to have some cash flow coming. We need to have some wealth to really be able to live and enjoy life. And as what um, Professor John Chauvin said from the Standard University, Professor of Economics, he said it is not realistic to finance a 30-year retirement with 30 years of work. You can't expect to put 10% of your income aside and then finance a retirement that's just as long. Now you look down here in the charts from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, most people aren't even saving 10%. You know, it's been 5% currently, it says here, but uh, the trend before that was well, well below probably even half of that, two, two, two to two and a half percent. So what are your saving? Do you save? Are you burdened with debt? This webcast is about you just making think about things that maybe we don't want to think about, the reality, but we have to face the reality before we can actually make some actual changes. Is the system that we have today sustainable? That's really an important um, question to ask yourself, I think mathematically, statistically, it's absolutely not. In 1950, there was about 16, you know, let's say, workers producing taxes going into a bucket to pay for each person on benefits to help the disadvantaged or elderly, whatever it might be. Today, there's less than three people producing taxes going in the same bucket. At the same time, we have an increasing amount of people dipping into that particular bucket with an aging population. So is it uh, sustainable? Should you back your life on such a system? I think not. I think it will be very naive uh, and actually dangerous thing to actually do that. It says here, a report from March this year, the Central States Pension Fund told its members on February that they needed to take massive cuts in benefits or the fund would be completely empty in 10 years. 
Imagine working 20, 30, 40 years, having a plan of your retirement. How are you going to live in that retirement? You have all the time freedom you want to have in your life, and all of a sudden you get this email, you get this letter in the mail, dear sir, dear madam, you're now going to have to take you know, 50% or 60% reduction on what you were expecting. And that's just a horrid thought. Imagine if you got a notice today in the mail on Monday morning and said you met your income has been reduced by 50 or 60 percent. What effect would that have upon you? Would you have the ability to draw upon other income? This is how we have to think today. Nothing is guaranteed. The financial institutions that we're brought up to condition in, to believe in, to respect and honour, that they're going to provide good, honest and sustainable service to us, we can't rely on them anymore. Just look at the last 10 years history, how many of the big names are no longer here today. And again, this webcast is not about preaching fear. It's just painting a picture of the reality of where we are in the world today so that you can make some right decisions to move forward because things can change in your favour very quick if you align yourself on the right sector, the right business model and certain elements within those business models. It says here the old Chinese proverb, the best time to, to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. It's never too late. And again, this is about wanting to challenge you on different things maybe we never thought about before. What is money? What is this stuff? You know, whether it's Swiss francs or whether it's US dollars, what is, what is this stuff that we have, paper that we dedicate so much of our life, 100,000 hours of our, of, our, of our life to generate this stuff to actually, of course, live the life that we want? What is it? How does it perform? You see here the image of a person actually tearing it in half. What it's really saying is this thousand US dollars or these Swiss francs between now and the near future, seven, eight, nine or ten years, it's going to buy less than half than what it actually does right now. Less than half. We have to understand that. Why are people around the world cash for gold? They want to give you they want, they, want to, they want to give you this paper stuff and they want, to take, they want to take your gold or they say, give me your junk jewelry. I can tell you right now, there's no such thing as junk gold and junk silver. It is intrinsic wealth. It is real wealth. It has been for thousands of years. Why do these people around the world want to do that? I want you to think about that. The odds are to become financially independent, unfortunately, are pretty harsh. The odds are stacked against us because the monetary system is stacked against us. Against us. And you might say, Bill, that's a conspiracy theory. Well, this is a statement here from John and Maynard Keynes. We live, in a, we live under a Keynes economic system. And he said this, not me. He said, by a continuing process of inflation, governments can confiscate secretly and unobserved an important part of the wealth of their citizens. There is no subtler, no sure means of overturning the existing basis of society than to debauch the currency. The process engages all of the hidden forces of economic law on the side of destruction and does it in a manner which not one man in a million is able to diagnose. The system is designed to transfer wealth away from you back to the central planners, back to the central banks. That's it. You understand that, then we have to start thinking differently how we build and preserve and accumulate our wealth. We see, of course, in our Media reports that inflation is very low, 1.9, maybe 2%. But what are, what are they really reporting to us? Is what they're reporting to us, is that really the truth? Are they giving us the full story? And again, this is just here to make us think. Think about what they feed us. Because what we feed us, what they feed us, quite often we make our decisions based on that. So we have to be willing and have the courage to dig deeper and question things. If you don't question things, you become the slave to other people's ideas. Even here, question me. It's very important. So what is money? Well, as I said to you before, probably this, uh, these US dollars, Swiss francs, euros, whatever it might be, Australian dollars, Canadian dollars, yen, next seven to ten years is probably going to buy less than 50% than what it will today. Now let's just use an example here. I'm going to make a point. Let's just say inflation is at 10%. That means that at 10%, your $100, 100 euro, whatever currency might be, will only buy $40 worth of goods and services 10 years from now. That's a 60% in reduction. Now, whether we're out a few years either side, does it really matter? 
the message here is that you and I have to double our income, definitely at least double our income in the next coming seven to ten years just to maintain where we are. We haven't even made headway. This is the tra tragedy. This is the point that John Man and Kynes is saying that the whole system is designed to transfer wealth away from you. It's like quicksand. That's why you might set goals. You want to buy a house, you want to buy this particular car, and you said it's a five-year plan. The five years goes by and all of a sudden the target's out of reach because the prices have increased so much. Not that the prices increase, they've increased the monetary supply, which of course the effect of that is, is a price increase, inflation. It's a loss of, it's a loss of buying power. This is the point that I really want to make. And the reason being that they promote that inflation is so low, up until 1980, up until 1980, many of the countries, in this case it's the US, they will report the cost of living, including food items, which we need of course, that is a necessity, and energy items within the actual CPI equation. Well, post-1980, they took that out, because 1970s was a very, very inflationary uh, period. Um, so, you know, governments don't want to send you the bad news, they want to get voted back in, correct? So they changed the game plan. So after 1980, they changed the rules. So whatever you hear now does not include food items and energy items, and therefore you see the cost of real inflation in the US dollar in America much higher up to maybe 8% 8, 8 or 8 9%, which of course has a huge effect on your buying power in the next 7 to 10 years. And this chart incidentally is done by an economist, John, John Williams from Shadow Stats. You can go to his website, uh, shadowstats.com, do your own research there. We also have, of course, Robert Kurosaki, the great financial educator. I might tell you a bit of a story about Robert later. I had the pleasure of meeting him and doing some business with him back in 1998, 1999 in Melbourne, Australia. He called this stuff, cash, is trash, francs, whatever it might be, trash. Why did he say that? I mean, if I went out in the street here in Zurich and dropped this stuff on the ground, it would be gone like a flash because I can take this currency and I convert it to goods and services. See, we still need to have it. I don't call it trash, personally. We still need to have it because we need to be able to live and pay for our bills and, and that's how the system works, correct? So the point he's making is up until 1971, the, under the US government from President Nixon, they changed the game plan, meaning that up until that time, central, foreign central banks could send back the US dollars and they, they could exchange it for physical gold. But there was so much gold flowing out of the central banks of America at that time due to the inflationary effect of the US dollar that they turned off that particular tap. They said, no, no, we're not, no longer exchanging gold for dollars. And that's really what changed the whole world when it came to the monetary system in that respect. And every other currency was pegged to the US dollar. Here behind me, you might be able to see it, I'm not sure. You see, on my, this side, you see you, these, all these notes, bank notes, are made from 24 karat gold. I'm a bit of a collector, I like gold. I like 24 karat gold. You know, I was, if I was to go swimming with this stuff, I left it in water for a while, it wouldn't be, not, it wouldn't be there. My $100 in so-called value would disappear. You know what, that 24 karat gold bank notes, you see me, whether it's the US dollars you see over here, whether it's what's in the middle there, I've forgotten. You, we have the US dollar, we have the old Deutsche Mark, which no longer exists probably one of the strongest currencies post Second World War for about 40 years, but it was merged into a basket of currencies into the Euro. And there we have the Euro banknotes here. Uh, and the reason being Robert Kurosaki is saying this, he's saying that if you want to save and build wealth, you don't do it in paper or your digital form in one sense. You need to turn it into tangible assets. Gold and silver is just one part of that. I'll continue on that story further. You want to be able to convert when you earn your, when you do a, supply your labor, provide your labor, and earn currencies and income. Don't save in paper currency in the bank. It's, it, you, the wealth is just slipping through your fingers. You want to convert it into tangible assets, whether it's housing, whether it's agricultural land, commercial businesses, which is generating, whatever it might be, the point he's making is to save in cash, it's a trashy way to do it because your buying power is continually uh, diminishing over time. And I never really understood this, mind you, in 2003, I went to Zurich, Switzerland. I was looking at uh, investing into an international energy fund, which I actually did do. And by this time, I'd owned four hotels. So I dealt with a lot of cash flow. And I was doing pretty well uh, at that respect. So I flew to Zurich wanting to invest in this international energy fund. 
And when I went into the boardroom of the Grant Thornton Accountants Office, I met a bullion banker called Philip Judge. And he said to me, Bill, we as a company only invest in products from the earth. Now I'd met many brokers, especially during the dot-com boom. Everyone was trying to sell me into different dot-com companies. And yes, I did buy many, many, many companies, made some money, but I lost a lot because when the crash came, dot-com boom, followed by the dot-com bust, many of you may be familiar with that, these companies had no intrinsic value whatsoever. This is why, this is why Warren Buffett never invested in these particular stocks at that particular time because they had no intrinsic value. And of course, when the bottom fell out of them, so did the share value, and I still have shares today uh, with, no, with no value uh, from them. But the point I'm making is when Philip made this comment to me, I knew I was dealing with someone who had a different mindset, who had different understanding, had more understanding than me. And he said to me, Bill, he said, he said, Bill, what's money to you? And I've never been asked this question before. Have you ever been asked? Has your banker ever asked you? Has your accountant ever asked you? Has your wealth advisor ever asked you, what is money? And yeah, I was actually, I was caught out. I said, well, Philip, I had my hotels, of course, so I provide service and products, and of course, they pay us in Australian dollars, so it's a, it's a means of, it's a medium of exchange, it's a unit of account. He said, what else should money be? And I said, I don't know, what do you mean? He said, have you heard of the concept of a store of value? I said, no, mind you, I was not educated in finance or educated in money. Even at our kitchen table growing up on the farm, for us to speak about money was disrespectful. We could talk about the labour and the jobs we do, the time required to earn it, but we couldn't really speak about it and discuss it in one respect. So I was really caught out. He said to me, Bill, he said, throughout history, he said, throughout history, he said, rulers of empires, royalty and the financial elite have always put a part of their wealth. He said, this is back in 2003, on that particular cycle, at that time, he said maybe 3 or 5% of their paper wealth, today you could also say digital wealth, into physical gold. And he said, the reason being is that you can go back to Roman times in one ounce of gold, such as I've got one here, from our Agro Horaz refinery, which is 31 grams, 31.103 grams, one troy ounce, would actually clothe a person, would buy a toga and a pair of leather sandals. He said 100 years ago, one ounce of gold would do the same thing. You could buy a three-piece suit, shirt and tie and leather shoes with an ounce of gold. And he said you could also do it with $20. Because $20 back then, up until 1933, would actually buy you one ounce of gold. It would also fully clothe you, a three-piece suit, shirt, and tie, and leather shoes. The ladies who go to the best boutique clothe themselves very well with 20 bucks. Of course, he's, I can see where this is going. He said, here we are in Zurich, Switzerland, Bill. What could you do with the $20 today? And I said, Philip, I said, we just came, we just came from having coffee and cake in downtown Zurich, and that cost pretty much you know, $20 in one respect. In fact, in Zurich today, this $20 note will give me probably three cappuccinos in the local cafe in Zurich City Centre. Three cappuccinos, that is gone. But then he pulled out some gold out of his pocket. He said, what about an ounce of gold, about a gold today? But what could that buy you? This is 2003. Well, it's the same today, same 100 years ago, same thousands of years ago. Exchange through any currency in the world, it will still, of course, clothe you very, very well. This simple example about store of value, about wealth preservation, changed my whole concept of wealth accumulation and preservation. I never really thought about wealth preservation before until this particular meeting. So my whole, my whole understanding completely changed. Here's a few more examples that you could use in your own part of the world, of course, do your own research. Up until 1933, gold was fixed at $20.67. You could actually buy a medium home, medium average home in the US, for just under $6,000, a couple of years income, uh, generally, or the equivalent of 278 ounces of gold. Well, today, 2016, the average medium home in the US is over a quarter of a million dollars. So you need a lot more paper stuff to buy the same unit of value. But you've been diversifying your savings, and wealth accumulation into gold, you still only need over 200 ounces of gold to actually buy it. Alan Greenspan, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve said, he said, in the absence of the gold standard, 
There is no way to protect savings from confiscation through inflation. There is no safe store of value. He's really saying what Professor Keynes had said. Savings from confiscation. Confiscation to whom? Well, it's from you, going back to the central banks and central planners in one respect. He was the chairman of the Federal Reserve for many, many, many years, greatly known around the world. So we have to understand this point. Silver is also a precious metal. In fact, historically being used for money out of the metals area for the last 5,000 years, it's been pretty much gold and silver, primarily due to its characteristics. But uh, silver up until 1920s, it was priced at 67 cents, and you could actually buy a very good mill back then for 67 cents. Well, today, of course, I mean, I just came back from New York, I'm in Switzerland now, 67 cents doesn't give you, parking meters don't take it anymore. They, they reject it. So you won't really get a good meal uh, for that. But the same ounce of silver, I think we've got some silver here somewhere. Oh, I must have moved it somewhere. Doesn't matter. And the same ounce of silver exchanged to the local currency anywhere in the world will still give you a very good meal uh, today. Okay, let's look at uh, silver. Up until 1964, a US quarter, 25 cents, it actually contained 5.6 grams of silver. It could buy you a gallon of gasoline. Well, since then, including Australia in the 1960s, they took out the silver from their coins and put, put in base metals. And of course today, uh, you know, a quarter or 25 cents certainly does not buy you a gallon of gasoline, doesn't buy you much, but the same 5.6 grams of silver, a precious metal, will still buy a gallon of gasoline. We see around the world, we see JP Morgan, the great uh, bullion bank, accumulating masses of ounces, millions and millions of ounces of silver, same as the Shanghai Futures Exchange Silver. Why do they do it? Why are they accumulating this? It means that, they, that they're really bullish on it, isn't it, if they're buying it. I mean, we uh, look at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. That they started buying silver. Hit about a bit over fifty dollars in 2011, or well, 2000 at the end of 2011, start of 2012. That's really when J.P. Morgan started to actually buy, and they've been buying, as I said, nearly 70 million ounces of silver since then. While well, the masses of people have lost the hope and faith, or lack of understanding of why they should own it, who's been buying it? It's a transfer of wealth. They've been giving you paper. They've been buying the metal. Uh, it's a long-term view. Central banks and gold. Collectively, central banks around the world actually have about 30,000 metric tons. That's a lot. It's about um, 62 million ounces uh, per, per 62,000 ounces per, um, per metric ton. So it's about $45 million per, per metric ton. So it's 30,000 metric tons held in central banks around the world. And you can see here, there's been a constant uh, increase in central banks. The same people that issue us this paper stuff, behind the scenes, they're actually converting their paper, or the digital, whatever it might be, into this physical gold. But they don't tell you and I to do it. Well, you know the story why they do it now. China, Russia, they're, they're buying plenty and plenty of gold. Even the first uh, six months of this year, central banks have, have dramatically increased their gold buying. But again, they're not telling you and I to actually do that. Look here, fiat currencies versus gold, loss of value over time. Well, purchasing parity, the whole idea of it is how much, how much people, this is where people get caught up and confused with precious metals pricing. They look at, they look at a dollar and they look at an ounce of gold and say, okay, this is priced at $1,200 an ounce, it's gone to $1,300 an ounce, this gold's gone up. Then this will drop down and they'll say that the dollar, uh, the gold has gone down. It's not the case actually. You've got to look at gold and, and really silver as a currency. It's just cross currency, like just like the US dollar or British pound, they fluctuate in one respect. It's the US dollar really moving up or down uh, in, its, in its pricing parity towards gold. This is a store of value. This stuff, as you can see here by these charts here, the longer you hold it, the less it's going to buy, and that trend is not going to change because central banks, European central bank, Japanese central bank, China, and of course the US are printing money crazy just to be able to service a debt. The trend of gold for, for decades has been on the increase because for decades the trend of this stuff is on the downhill slide. So have a long-term view. See gold and silver as an insurance policy. I'm not trying to sell, 
tell you to sell your house and buy gold and silver. That would be an irresponsible thing to do. As Philip Judge, the bullion banker, said to me, it's diversification. Maybe it's three, maybe it's five. Maybe in this current climate, maybe it's 10% of your paper wealth you're putting into physical gold. But I think it's important to actually have it. Gold is the money of kings. has been for over 5,000 years. So it's, it's proven in the marketplace. It is a store of value. It stores your economic energy. Now, what do I mean by that? It took me a little while to get hold of this. Let me give you a, just a little bit of an example. Last week, you may have worked 50 hours, for example, and you actually, for 50 hours, you were paid in digital probably these days, because banks in many parts of the country don't accept currency, paper wealth anymore. They only take it digital transfers. But you were paid digitally or with paper currency in one respect. Well, five to ten years from now, this is going to buy a lot less, isn't it? Five years now it might be that much, and then, of course, ten years now it might be that much. It's a bit like last week going to work for 25 hours and signing on for 50 hours. It's unjust. In fact, it's criminal, isn't it? Well, it's primarily what happens to your, to your paper currency when you look at it the other side. It's the same thing. So it's a store of value, it's universally accepted, it's priced the same globally, it's precious, there's only about a half a troy ounce available per person on planet Earth, which makes it great for money. It's a transfer of wealth. Rulers of empires, financially elite, royalty, don't buy it because it just glitters, they understand the true meaning, it's a transfer of wealth. You put this, I was to put this aside, this thousand dollars here aside, for my children to take out in ten years from now, well guess what, half of that's purchasing power is lost, gone. Do the same with this, it's a different story and the same with silver as well. That's why it's a transfer of wealth. We can learn a lot from that. A gold is produced at the Argyll Horais refinery in Switzerland, about 230 kilometers south from here, which is right on the Italian border. Uh, it's produced there. Argyll Horais is only one of five refineries in the world which the London Bullion Market accredited to be a referee or watchdog refiner, meaning that they certify other producers, etc. They do all of that certification to the highest purity, 24 carat from 99.9. .9. We don't get to handle your precious metals. It's, it's produced there, shipped to Loomis International, which is another London Bullion Market accredited storage facility and then it's then shipped off to you by Federal Express to the countries where we can actually ship it, or it's stored on your behalf until you wish to liquidate. We're now going to move on to the second part of the presentation, which is really just touching on our real knowledge uh, module. I think this is really important uh, knowledge, because I look back at my life coming from a farm and then going on to own four hotels and founding a Swiss company in 2008. My life has really changed. But what made it change? What came first? Was it the wealth or was it the change of mindset? There's no question about it. I mean, it's a journey life, of course. It's my mindset. The people who I associate with, the people who I listen to, the advice, I, the people who I take the advice from. Is it the right advice? Is it the wrong advice? I've made many mistakes. But one thing's for sure, having a clearly defined plan, understanding what you want, understanding who you are, understanding how you want to live, making decisive decisions, having that mapped out. Most people never do that. I thought I understood money because I owned hotels and had cash flow coming in. Well, as it says here from Stephen Hawking, the greatest enemy of, of knowledge is not ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. I thought I was pretty smart. Well, when I was in that meeting in, in Zurich, I realized that I was not smart at all. I had no understanding of really what money was until that particular point. We have a, you know, a great array of people who offer their services to you. We don't pay them through their own heart and desire because we're a purpose-driven company. They want to give back from Nancy Failer, we'll speak about Nancy and Don shortly, to Carolina Oliveris, the international lawyer. She's doing a webcast, uh, I think on the 29th of this particular month, international lawyer. Fantastic. She actually co-authored Robert Kiyosaki's first um, educational uh, book, I believe. She is a great, she lectures at many universities in the United States. And of course, many of you know Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher. Getting into Bob Proctor's programs, in fact, how I got involved in them, I was involved with a multiple level marketing company, as I said, I owned my um, second hotel, introduced to multiple level marketing. Well, later on, the, the company in Australia that was, they bought the rights to Bob Proctor's program. You Were Born Rich, it was called. Outstanding program. We have part of, uh, part of that, uh, we have the full program 
as part of our uh, faculty uh, in our education series, The Real Life Revolution. And all the diamonds did that. These people were earning good money. And you know, there's no question to me, I haven't stopped studying who I am, what I am, how I think, how I make my decisions since then. All these people who have achieved great success in their own individual area are here to help you, uh, of course, gain great success. And uh, we'll touch on Nancy and Don a little bit later, later on. It says here, John Maxwell says, the great leadership coach says, you'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. What do you do on a daily basis? If you want to change your life, we have to change something, don't we? Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's doing things that we don't like to do in one respect. I'll give you a bit of a story about Bob Proctor, which he tells quite often, of course, for people who are familiar with Bob. He actually, going back many years ago, he consulted to Prudential Life Insurance Company. Now, in one year, he changed, he increased the company's revenues by hundreds of millions of dollars. That is significant. Hundreds of millions of dollars. And what did he do? Well, obviously, he coached the sales agents within that particular company, and he asked them to change two habits. And those two habits were this. He said, I want you to be in front of your first prospect by 9 a.m. each morning and ask them to buy the big insurance company uh, insurance policy that you have. And at that time, of course, it was $100,000. Now, most people, he said, when they get up in the morning, they go for the usual you know, regime in one sense. They might get to the office, they'll read the paper, talk to the fellow workers and things like that, and maybe the afternoon before they get in front of the first prospect. He said, don't even go to the office. Be in front of your, of your first prospect by 9 a.m. each morning. Just that simple decision changed the entire company. So it's a good idea for us. What are, what are, what are our income generating activities? What do we do to change our income on a daily basis? It's, just good, it's a good thought. And these programs that we have here from Bob Proctor, You Were Born Rich, uh, the success puzzle which is being facilitated right now uh, on a weekly basis, they are outstanding programs. There's many other programs there as well. But guys, if you don't change your life, you're going you're gonna to get what you've been doing. That means you may end up where you are heading. Lao Tzu. It's a pretty simple statement, but in this game we always say, if you continue to do what you've always done, you're going to continue to be what you've always been. We have to change something, and only us can create that change, and change is not so easy. So education programs can be a good thing for us to do that. It's not a good thing, it's a great thing. We need to have it. We need to have an accountability um, partner in one sense to make sure that we are doing the things to create the change that we actually want. The last part of the presentation, let's talk about income. Multiple streams of income. Now, I'm not against jobs. We need to render service. We need people to drive taxis. We need doctors, of course. We need uh, you know, nurses. You know. We need people to, to, of course, provide service in their given profession. And if you love what you do, you should keep doing it. But statistically, as an income generating source by itself, it's not enough. And this is what Anthony Robbins, a great you know, personal coach who's changed millions of people's lives. I think he fed something like 50 to 60 million people last year uh, in America. Uh, and this year he's going to increase that. He said this, no matter where you live, if you don't have another source of income, it is highly probable that you will work your entire life and retire broke. I don't even want to contemplate or think that. You have all the time, all the time that you ever want. You have your health, hopefully. You want to have the income. You want to be able to live the life that you want to be able to travel and experience things when you never had that free time. Well, you're going to need another source of income. For most people, for 95% of people, a job by itself is not enough. Even Dr. Philippa Melbourne, and she understands money. She worked in the United States President's Working Group on Financial Markets. She worked in the Global Asset Management for Bankers Trust, and was also the Chief Currency Strategist for them out of Hong Kong. She was the head of the Global Investment Strategy UBS Bank, which is one of Switzerland's largest bank, Deutsche Bank, out of Germany, of course. There's a lot of the news about Deutsche Bank, that its earnings uh, have reduced by about 98% or something. Banks are changing. And of course, uh, she now advises the largest sovereign wealth funds, hedge funds, and pension funds in the world. She says this, here's a lady that understands money much better than me. 
right? Just a, a simple guy thinking logically what money is and what I should do to be able to accumulate and live a better life. And this is what we're here for, to help you have a better life. She says, at the end of the day, there's only one thing that can outrun inflation. And frankly, deflation. And just look at that. That's just really the changing characteristics of this paper stuff or digital stuff. And that is investing in yourself, investing in your own ability to generate more cash going forward. She knows it. We have to generate much more of this stuff moving forward. If you're not doubling your income next seven to ten years, you're going backwards. So look where you are now, it could just get worse. So we have to focus on generating and compounding our income. Warren Buffett said, never depend on a single income. Well, I myself was actually taught to do that, have a single bank account, have a single job, blah, blah, blah. But we know for 95% that doesn't actually work. may have worked many years ago. If it did, I don't know, but it certainly doesn't today. So do you have a plan? Well, at Swiss Gold Global, we, we do have a plan. Because there's generally only, only two ways that you can actually earn an income. One is where you trade your time for money, let's say it's a job, nothing wrong with that. But it has its limitations when it comes to achieving financial independence. One limitation is if you're trading your time for money, if it's, if it's $10 for an hour, if I work 10 hours, I'm gonna pick up 100. If I wanna earn 200, well, I've got to trade 20 hours to do that in one respect. Pretty simple concept. So it's limiting. Also, the thing is, you're going to pay the most taxes. We live in pretty much a, a bipolar tax system, one for the workers and one for businesses. Now, I put something up on Facebook the other day. It shows clear the trend is to be in your own business. Taxes in the US for the individual went from 41% up to 45% to the individual. At the same period, it reduced from 30% from businesses down to 10% for businesses. So it's just logically, if you want to put more money in your pocket, you've got to have a proper taxation or foundation as well. So you need to get professional advice there in your part of the world. But primarily, you need to think that way if you want to change your life. The second way to pick up uh, extra income is to have money working for you, invest in this stuff and get a return on it. But only 3% of people do this. Why? Well, I can, I can only speak for myself in the early days because, one, I didn't have the working capital. That didn't limit me in the end, but, one, I didn't have the working capital. The big one was I was probably scared and scared of, you know, I was ignorant. I didn't have the understanding. I didn't have the specialized skills. And therefore, you have the fear of loss. That's probably most reasons why people don't really invest uh, in money. But we have a plan B, and it's called multiple streams of income. It's not another job. It's another source of income. So if you're a nurse or a teacher, just keep doing that. Keep doing what you're loving to do. But at the same time, we want you to actually generate another source of income. Making money while you sleep. Residual income. Very important. Anthony Robbins speaks about this in his book. In fact, I recommend people to get that book. Very important. You go to bed tonight, you wake up in the morning, and there's more money in your account. Most people go to bed at night, wake up in the morning, and someone's been sucked out to pay some bills. You've got to have this, and you've got to have leverage of time if you want to actually create financial independence. Very, two very important factors. You have to be able to have a system that can duplicate. Wealth preservation we've touched on already with the gold and silver. John D. Rockefeller, the great oil magnet, said, I would rather earn 1% of 100 people's efforts than 100% of my own efforts. Think about that. If you really get that, what he says there, you will never do anything else. In fact, we'll get to that shortly when we start speaking about Don Felix. He speaks about this in his chapter. You understand the numbers and the power of numbers, the power of compounding, the power of building an organization, you will do nothing else ever again. I mean, I just love it. I fell in love with it in the early 1990s. This picture here is actually from a bank in Dubai. I work a bit in Dubai. I'm actually a licensed gold trader in Dubai. I have a company there, so I deal with some different banks. And in the banks, I walked in one day, and they've got these brochures there. It says, referring is rewarding. I thought, isn't this wonderful? This is the same business we're in. So I go and refer products and services from this bank. They're actually going to pay me. Well, guess what? That's what we do at Swiss Gold Global. That's what Amazon does. In fact, Amazon generates about 40% of its revenues through affiliate marketing. Turned over $70 billion last year. 40% of that revenue came from people loving the product, sharing it. And if you're an affiliate, you can go, you get paid a small income. Very, very nice. Well, Swiss Gold Global is the same deal. If you like our products and services, 
and you recommend and share them to other people, and they buy a product or service from us, you're going to get paid. Pretty simple. If you don't like us, you're certainly not going to recommend us. So it's a very honest system, I believe. Online services means you can market our programs anywhere in the world. So if you're in Sydney, Australia, or Auckland, New Zealand, good morning to you, Sunday morning there already, and you know someone in New York, which is early afternoon, you're heading that way, lunchtime there, today, Saturday, you're going to get paid. If you're in Bucharest, Romania, and you know someone in Taipei, Taiwan, you're going to get paid and likewise. But the biggest thing about this business model is understanding it. Don Fahler, who wrote this book nearly 40 years ago, Don and Nancy, incidentally, are in retirement age. They realize that most people live the rat race. They had lived the rat race. They owned a 24-7 pancake parlor in America going back nearly 40 years ago. Three days off in three or four years. It was run by teenagers. So I'm sure they didn't have much time to themselves whatsoever. They were introduced to this industry, fell in love with it, created great success. Today, they're in retirement age. They travel the world. They built an organization, not with Swissco Global, with another company of over 800,000 members. They're making more money in retirement than most people make in their lifetime career. Residual income. They go to sleep at night, wake up in the morning, bingo, there's money in there. That's what we have to do. Don wrote this book as a system. It's not just a book, it's a system. You follow the system, build your organization. Now you can go to 45second.com. There's much material there. Actually, the key napkin presentation that Don offers you is available for free at this particular website. I encourage each and every one of you to read them. It is life-changing. It changed my understanding of this industry, I must say. Don's also, because he's a great supporter, he offers coaching to our members, him and Nancy, every, um, every month. In fact, next week we're having some calls. Monday night's a call with Don, actually, doing a live call to our members. He offers our members a 20% discount on any of the materials. So that code you can see here, ACTM2016, if you want to pick up one of Don's materials, which can be life-changing to you, to your lifestyle, no question. If it's a $10, it's going to cost you $8 instead, which is that you can buy with a silver with that uh, as an example. He's released this year the Action Manual. This is truly a roadmap. You get your team organized and arranged in this book and someone facilitates this and goes through what's in this particular manual, it has to change your organization, it has to, it has to create growth. Just like what Bob Proctor taught to the, to the Prudential uh, sales agents, this also has, would have that effect as well. So I just want to recommend this here because most people don't do this industry because they don't understand it. So here you have someone here who has 40 years of history and understanding it, he's had great success, so that's why we recommend that. Our compensation plan is very generous. It's actually a very simple one to actually understand because building an organization is really what's going to give you the lifestyle and set you free. Robert Kurosaki said, the richest people in the world look for and build networks. Everyone else looks for work. I was in Robert's office in Scottsdale, Arizona some years back and um, I picked up the business of the 21st century. It's really just talking about what we're speaking about here. The importance of having a plan B, another source of income. In Swiss Gold Global, we are one of those. Um, you know, you can be in multiple companies. We're one of those companies that can help you uh, have a, a greater life. There are three ways to be involved with Swiss Gold Global as a smart saver. It's a free account where you convert paper stuff into physical gold and silver. A premium member and a premium member and an affiliate. As a premium member, you get to receive your Swiss Gold Global Precious Metals account where you can buy gold and silver accumulated from as little as $25 per month, which is less than a dollar a day. It doesn't matter how much you're accumulating, the important thing is to understand why you need to have gold and silver and start. We have many countries represented here, so $25, I understand, for many it could be 10% of your monthly income. We want to honor you as well. If you're accumulating, life changes. Maybe you've got some unexpected bills coming in. You need to liquidate. Well, with us, there's no penalty. We don't take any fees for that. If you're active, Member of Swiss Gold Global, you go back to your precious metal account, you say you want to sell X amount of gold or X amount of silver, next uh, market pricing, if it goes at whatever price it is, that's the price you get, three to five working days, the money is back in your account. We store it in Dubai, we can store it in Switzerland, we physically ship to you, storage fees are included in the membership as well. 
And of course, you get the Real Wealth Coaching Programs. Don't, don't underestimate the, the power of these programs. Really, if, you, if you're in, your life, in a period in your life right now, and you want to create some change in your life, you know, I've done this several times in my in my life, and it's it, and uh, to be able to, to go for a program in an orderly process, it will really it will really make you think about things you never maybe thought of before, and you have a great outcome. So I highly recommend that. It's a one-time payment of $150. Then it's just $50 per month. Now you actually receive 25% in silver as well from the $150. So the real cost uh, is much less than that, and each month the $50 includes 25% in silver as well. But if you want to become an affiliate and a member, you receive the same things as what a premium member does, but you also receive a business center. So just like Amazon, just like the bank in Dubai, if you want to share, or sharing is rewarding, you're going to get paid. It's a one-time payment of $199. Straight away you get $50 in physical silver in your account, you can go back and sell it back tomorrow. The money will be transferred back into your account. It's your silver, $50 worth. So the real cost is only $149. And then it's just $50 per month, which of course 25% of that is actually in silver. So with this program from day one, you accumulated your silver in your program. But if you want to be like Claudia, who um, of course introduced and hosted this call, you want to get your gold and silver for free. And that's all I'm going to share with you right now because she's a bit of a gold queen in one sense. She loves to accumulate it. She understands why she needs to accumulate it. And um, she gets paid to actually do so. She gets paid to save in gold and silver. But what got me hooked in this industry was understanding compounding. Now, Anthony Robbins speaks a lot about this in his book. And he said, if you don't have compounding in, in your life today, you've got to position yourself on the right side of compounding. Most people are positioned on the wrong side, meaning that they're you know, maybe indebted, the bank, they're highly indebted, therefore they're paying compound interest, which means you're really enslaved to the lender. Well, you can switch that around, of course, and make compounding your friend. And when I learned this in the early 1990s, this is the thing that got me in. I didn't join that company that the person introduced me to. I joined another company. This is the thing that really got me in once I, understand, once I understood the numbers. And Don Fowler spends quite a bit of time on this as well in his napkin presentations. The person asked me a simple metaphor, many of you may be aware of, of course, if you, what would you rather have, a million dollars or double a cent for 30 days? So let's just look at the example here. Now, if you have the right knowledge, this is where, of course, understanding, ignorance, it's you know, what decision you're going to make. You're going to take the million dollars or you're going to take the doubling the cent? Well, double a cent day one, day two, of course, it's two cents, day three, it's four cents. If we jump to day 21, we're at ten and a half thousand dollars quite magnificent compounding from one cent. But we are a long way away from a million dollars. So if you're the person that said, I'll take the million dollars, you're probably laughing at me right now. And the important part about this is, uh, even this is what Don teaches in his book, Building the Bedrock. You have to build a foundation. You can see it's taken 21 days in this respect. It's taken, it could be 21 months as an example to build to this particular foundation. And you've got an okay result, a pretty good result, but it's taken time. This is a foundation. But you know what, if you understand, once you've got a foundation built in your organization, then it starts to kick in, the turbo kicks in, the exponential wealth starts to kick in. The next nine days, you jump to, actually the next seven days, it jumps to 1.3 million. Significant increase. This industry is like that as well. And of course, day 30, you're now at 5.3 million. Understanding the power of numbers, understanding the power of compounding is significant. To give you an idea, one hour of your time, could you afford one hour a day if it was going to change your life? Could you afford one hour per day? One hour per day equates to nine full working weeks in a year. Nine full working weeks of productivity, one hour a day that you could add to your, to your, of course, to your bank account. Well, introduce it to five people, each doing one hour per day. You now have, of course, an extra 45 to 50 weeks of productivity which you're going to be paid on, but you've only contributed one hour per day. They've only contributed one hour per day, but collectively, you're all winners. This is the whole idea. As I said, our pay plan, which was designed by Mike Sheffield from the Sheffield Resource Network in the USA, Mike consults 
all the big companies around, uh, multi-level marketing companies around the world, been in the game 25 to 30 years. You can Google him, Mike Sheffield, Sheffield Resource Network. He designed our pay plan. Well, you've introduced to five people, you've earned $350, your profit's $150, you're out of danger. Not that it's huge risk anyway, but you're already in the money. Introduce five people. And we work with five because Don Thaler teaches five. Five is a manageable number. Again, get into Don's book. It teaches five. And of course, with five people, like $150, you have to, you're not financially independent, but you can convert that straight away to physical gold and silver. We don't take any transfer fees. So there's no merchant fees straight from your wallet back to gold and silver. Well, you could actually take it to your own account and pay off maybe your phone bill or something like that. Introduce five people, you already break even. The monthly, the monthly fee is already covered. You're picking up $37.50 in commissions for five people on a monthly basis, $50 per month, remember? You've got $13 in silver, which you're getting every month. You break even. $13 in silver, it's money. So this is, this is really the important point. But of course, you want to build your organization. It's going to take time. So let's just say hypothetically that month, month, month one, you learn what we have here, you introduce five people. Month two to four, they, those five people each introduce five people themselves. You're now picking up just under $200 per month. Plus you're getting your silver on top. So you've got four times your money already. Now, if I was an investment broker and I came to your, to your work or to your home and presented this that you're gonna get four times your money, I guarantee it, you would be in. Because it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Of course. It's going to take effort, it's going to take some skill, it's going to take understanding, like all things. But it's very low risk this, very low risk what we have here. Of course, on the second level, those people get to understanding what we're about, what we do, what the purpose is, wealth accumulation, a very liquid uh, platform that we have, a very liquid exchange platform we have here. And they actually duplicate those 25 members, five members each. You now have 155 members totally in your organization. You're earning over $500 per month plus your silver. Now, $500 a month for some people is a monthly income. For others, it may be a drop in the ocean. But we know even in the United States, from the housing foreclosures, 50% of them would have been actually um, prevented if households had a, as little as $500 extra per month. Putting $500 a month towards your house mortgage could ha ha halve the house mortgage take 10 years off your mortgage like that. So it doesn't have to be the big numbers to change your life. But again, we're building an organization it takes time because we want to be able to duplicate them over time. This is what Don says, we're now building the bedrock. You've got the three to four levels, you're now building deep, you're building the bedrock, so you're getting some stable income coming in. Now you're at, you know, you're, at, you're now earning over $2,000 per month. And this is actually is close to the 3,000 with the other bonuses that we have. So now you can see you're actually generating a pretty significant income. Even from this $50 a month, $50 a month program, which includes silver, share with a five, duplicate, within 12 months you could be on a six-figure income getting your gold and silver for free, changing your life, changing other people's life. Because that's really the whole purpose of Swiss Gold Global. Why do we need to have gold? Because our paper currencies, digital currencies, which is our bank, uh, whatever country you're actually in, is losing buying power. The smart money is starting to flow into gold. No question about that. Look at these biggest hedge fund managers in the world to control billions, if not hundreds of billions of dollars of, uh, of uh, investments. And you know, as Stanley Drucker Miller says, we regard gold as a currency, as money that is, and it remains our largest currency allocation, more than the US dollar, more than the Swiss franc, more than the euro. So if these smart people are doing, we need to be smart. And even if it's only $25 a month, even if it's just a membership where you're picking up the silver each month, guess what? You're doing what these big investors and these central banks are doing. So with that, if you want to build cash flow and be paid to save in gold and silver, your next step is, of course, team up with us. We'd love to have you. We don't actually um, <clears throat> advertise or employ advertising agencies or marketing agencies. You are our voice. If you like what we do, and you want to help change your life, help change other people's lives, well, we'd love to have you. I suggest that you get back and contact with the person that introduced you to Swiss Gold Global or reach out to Swiss Gold Global yourself, support at swissgoldglobal.com and maybe we can arrange a leadership call for you.
with that, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out on this wonderful Saturday afternoon. And I want to wish you a wonderful weekend, and much prosperity and great health. Thank you so much. This is Bill Rao from Cisco Global.